You've been patiently waiting for another controller review, and luckily we're starting with a pretty darn sweet controller. This is the Nacon Revolution X for Xbox One, Series, and Windows PCs. We are gonna thoroughly test, review, and grade this controller based on 15 categories. We are gonna run some tests for the response, accuracy, and dead zones of the thumbsticks. We are gonna test the polling rate and response time in milliseconds. We're gonna see how this controller responds to being overclocked. We're gonna talk about the warranty, comfort, ergonomics, fit and finish, face buttons, D-pad, how to remap and use these four rear buttons, which by the way, are pretty good. And finish up with the pros, cons, and if I think this is a good value. Oh yeah, this has Dolby Atmos built in, meaning you can plug virtually any headset into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and you will get virtual surround from the Dolby Atmos software suite. I was curious how this was going to perform as I mentioned during the beginning of this review. However, by the end of it, I was absolutely blown away when I did a couple demos and it sounded like I was using a headset that was tuned with drivers for Atmos. Unlike me on the weekends, it works. Let's get this thing. Alrighty, stallions and stallionettes, you might hear some thunderous booms off in the distance. It's been about five minutes since we've had a thunderstorm, so Florida's making sure that it remedies that situation for us. And while the weather might be frightful, reviewing controllers is so delightful. In front of my chinny chin chin, we had the Revolution or Rev X controller for Xbox One series and PC. This is by Rig, which is actually an offshooter department of Nacon, which has been making gaming peripherals since the Civil War, at least 1981 when they were founded. They're a French company. They've been making headsets and controllers for decades, 41 years to be specific. Specific. They've also sent their Pro Compact controller. This is probably the best way to hold it by the cord like that. But they have sent their Pro Compact controller, which is specifically for small-handed individuals. This will be reviewed on the channel in the near future. But today we're focusing on this black behemoth over here, the Rev X, which is loaded with Dolby Atmos. Now, when I see that little badge on there, I'm slightly skeptical because getting that badge of approval that something has THX Spatial or Dolby Atmos has gotten a lot more leeway, a lot more loose with those qualifications, those standards. So we will be testing that thoroughly to see if that 3.5 millimeter jack in the bottom is giving you authentic Dolby Atmos virtual surround sound. Considering generally you have to have an audio device, sound bar, surround sound system, or headset that does have drivers that are acoustically tuned for that surround sound technology. But there is a strong possibility that Nacon with their 40 years of experience have done a little black magic voodoo to actually get that surround sound experience built into the chipset or PCB of this controller. Now the box is flat matte black, quite minimal design with some lime green branding as it is a licensed Microsoft Xbox product. And you do have a clear plastic tray in the bottom holding your controller in place. No laser cut foam or anything, but that's not a big deal considering it is sitting or cradled inside of this carrying case, which is black with a small Nacon logo right here. You've got some lime green trim on the zipper and this is a metal pull tab that feels very high quality. Flipping her open to take a look at her insides. You do have lime green in here just to let you know, hey, I'm I'm an Xbox fan, buddy. That's my console of choice. Now, we do want to give Rig slash Nacon some due praise here because they are one of the few companies that thought ahead here and put this net up here to where when you close it, it is not resting over the thumbsticks putting pressure on them. We live in a world where, unfortunately, stick drift is practically an inevitability, whether it happens four months or four years down the road, unless a controller is using magnetic Hall effect sensors in the thumbsticks, which like less than 1% of controllers do, Catch your breath, I'm getting passionate about stick drift. Almost every premium and custom controller on the market puts their net with their cable directly over the thumbstick. So whenever you close the case, they're basically just sitting in there all cockamamie, which is basically accelerating the problem with stick drift. But when you close this case, this cable is actually down here at the bottom, which I like a lot. Now you do need to use this cable as this is a wired only controller. And luckily this is a long cable. It's a 10 footer or three meter for our brothers on the other side of the pond. Is that how that converts? Alexa, what is 10 foot in meters? 10 feet is about 3.05 meters. 3.05 according to my calculations. So you have this soft shell carrying case, you have this microfiber wiping cloth, which you won't need too much because there is no piano or gloss black on here. It is just flat matte black, which I genuinely prefer because you're not gonna get fingerprints and micro scratches. Damn, this these thumbsticks feel good. I can't wait to get to that section of the video. You're also gonna have this plastic accessory tray over here, which says Revolution X Pro Controller. Now popping this open, you might think, are these ABEX 7 bearings for a skateboard? Or are these dumbbells for mice? Uh, you would be false in both of those statements there. These are actually weights that are labeled in grams on the top. For example, this one is a 14 gram and you can pop those into the hand grips if you prefer a heavier controller. Me personally, I don't really see a practical use for having a heavier controller. It's gonna put more fatigue on your wrists. Granted, a lot of games
gamers just kind of prop their elbows like this, or a lot of times they'll just have their hands on their desk like this, to where a heavy controller really doesn't matter. But if you're one of the people that hover up like this, that's putting a lot of fatigue and pressure on your wrists while you're gaming. But I do understand that sometimes a heavier controller can feel more premium, like it's using better materials, better plastics. So you do have six weights in here, two 14 grams, two 10 grams, and two 16 grams. So if you wanted to mix and match and have like a heavier left side than a right side, you could. I'm not really sure. Maybe if you were born with an imbalance where you have like one sunken shoulder or something and you want to even yourself back out for those competitive shooters, you could do that. Now these right here, let's see if I can get them out without pouring everything else out, are actually little metal rings that limit the movement or rotation of the analog sticks. This is again a feature that I don't see a practical use for, except for maybe on the left analog stick where you really don't need all that much travel because it's just for movement, for running, for aiming. You never ever want to limit your range of motion on the right analog stick. In fact, you want more leverage or range of motion. That's why people use things like Control Freak's thumbstick caps or put on aftermarket taller thumbsticks so you can crank up the in-game sensitivity and do those small finite movements for sniping and then also snap or flick aim if somebody's behind you so they can meet their maker. You do also have two additional thumbstick caps, which we will get into in the thumbstick section of this review. And we are gonna plug it to the PC and measure the out of the box dead zones. And I'm gonna give you my thoughts as far as resistance, overall feel, anti-friction rings, response, and how these thumbsticks perform. Now, I personally do think they could condense this into one, maybe two pieces of documentation, but that's kind of nitpicky, I guess. So you have your stickers over here. It's not a true gaming accessory or peripheral unless you get stickers with it. This adds frames per second to your rig and confidence to your libido. What you can do is slap these on the side of your PC tower. Nothing is more classy and less tacky than sticker bombing your PC tower. Same thing with your car. If it doesn't accelerate as hard as you'd like in second gear, a couple of stickers on the bumper will remedy that. This card right here directs you to their customer support and also their YouTube channel where they have some useful tutorials. Not as useful as this YouTube review though. You've got your safety instructions over here that nobody ever reads, but basically it tells you not to use this thing like a Frisbee, not to choke anybody out with the cable. Just a bunch of things that sound ridiculous, but you know if they wrote it down, somebody's done it in the past. Then you have two more pamphlets saying the same information in different languages. Now this is a very important card over here. This beautiful purple, slick, glossy card is letting you know that this controller is equipped with Dolby Atmos and explains that you need to go to the Microsoft store on either your Windows 10 or 11 PC or your Xbox One or Series and you will be able to install Dolby Atmos for free with this product as it is a licensed Dolby Atmos product. Boom, and it tells you right there, designed for competition. They're setting the bar pretty high by labeling this as a competitive esports controller. It is wired, so it should be, you know, zero latency, lickety split. Bunch of languages that I unfortunately am not fluent in. I've been working on my Rosetta Stone, but I am slacking. Okay, English is over here with this uh, UK flag. Wait, that's British, right? Oh God. Oh, this is embarrassing. So really, this isn't a full-fledged instruction manual. It doesn't really break down how to swap the thumbsticks or how to put in the weights or anything like that. But I really do think that they should add how to physically change the weights and the hand grips because a lot of people might be like, well, how do I install these bad boys? Granted, there is a little arrow there. So my common sense would tell me to take my thumb and push down and it's gonna open like that. But Common sense is not common, and a lot of gamers might not know how to do this without instructions. As for the usable practical features as well as marketing quirks of this controller, it is labeled or marketed as a competitive wired controller. Every company that has a wired controller is gonna market it as being competitive because it's wired. Even controller, even wireless. Calm down there, big dog. I'm editing the video. I think what you meant to say is every controller can be used wired. Can be used wired. However, wireless technology has gotten to a point to where 2.4 gigahertz dedicated connections, as well as some Bluetooth technologies are just as fast, like the threshold in milliseconds, which I will prove in another video, is so close that it's really not even that big of a deal. The only people that would even notice, and they probably don't even really notice, they might just claim that they do, is competitive esports players, which less than 1% of gamers are. But there is a practical benefit of being wired and that is the fact that you don't ever have to worry about your battery dying mid gameplay session. And it is more consistent as well. This is the only controller I've ever reviewed that has Dolby Atmos surround sound built in and does include an activation code to Dolby Atmos. It's not even a code, you just plug it in and it activates. It does have a robust software suite that allows you to remap dead zones for your thumbsticks, set trigger dead zones as well as remap the rear paddles and another cool feature, not paddles, these are rear buttons, they're sunken into the rear shell. And another cool feature if you don't have a PC or you don't want to install the application on your Xbox, you can actually remap these rear buttons on the fly by switching it to classic mode with this slider back here. If you put it in advance, that's gonna allow you to use the application suite. So that is cool that you have two methods of customizing or controlling 
this controller. It does include two swappable thumbstick caps. You do have convexed and then concaved. Convex is another word for domed, and then you have concaved, which are dipped in. But that's pretty standard fanfare. Most premium and custom controllers include at least two additional thumbsticks, if not four. This also does have an addressable RGB ring around the right analog stick, which is very interesting. I've always wondered, they do this on the other Nacon controllers too, why it's only on the right analog stick, not the left. Maybe it's to cut manufacturing costs, or maybe they think it looks cooler to just be on the aiming stick, but just quirky. You do also have a share button, which is awesome as this is usable for the Series S and X. However, with the latest firmware update for the Xbox One, it actually activated that feature where you can now use a share button if you're using an Xbox Series controller on an Xbox One. So that's pretty cool. If you just bust out a 360 no scope, slide cancel, frag bang, and then dominated some 13 year old who's it's his first time playing Call of Duty, you can just press the share button to save that clip and show your friends what a big boy you are instead of having to hold down the home button and then press a concurrent face button to save a screenshot or video clip. Pretty dope. And as for a very unique or quirky feature, it does have those weights that you are able to pop into the hand grips over here, which I've only seen Nacon controllers do that. And I don't see any practical use for having a heavier controller. However, I guarantee there's some gamers out there that are like, well, dude, I'm so slow. I deadlift 315. So when I pick up a controller, it feels like a toy. I got to load her up with some fishing weights. Usually I take her apart and pop a couple of uh, lead sinkers in there out of my tackle box. But now you don't need to do that because it includes them, which is cool. As for the ergonomics measurements and weight popping up on screen right here, no, it's not, because I couldn't dig it up online even with a big old shovel. So over here on the Nacon Gaming website, it has all kinds of tech specs, but it is lacking the dimensions and weight, which is interesting. Over here on Amazon, which is weird, it's $126 here, but this retails for $100. That's because it's a third-party listing. There's an actual listing from Nacon on Amazon, and it is $100 with Prime shipping. It is listing this as 835 grams, and the item dimensions of 3.35 by 8.23 by 7.24 inches. That might be the box, though because that seems pretty large. Might be the controller though, who knows? It's not on the Nacon website. It does feel very good. It uses a different shell design than an Xbox One or Series controller, but I actually think this is more comfortable, which is saying a lot because the Xbox controllers are very comfortable. It does of course have the offset sticks versus the symmetrical sticks of the PlayStation controllers. You do have a little bit of a textured grip here. It's not rubberized or anything. It's just kind of etched into the plastic, but it does feel good. It doesn't provide the most grip in the world, but it does feel good on the palms. The rear buttons, which we will talk about thoroughly during that section of the video, feel very good and add to the comfortable ergonomics because you can rest your hand naturally in a position that you wanna hold your controller and still access all four of the buttons very easily. And you're not accidentally actuating them because they require a good amount of resistance to cleanly hit. Overall, the ergonomics of this controller feel very, very good. So as for the build quality, hey buddy. So as for the build quality, fit and finish, the plastics do feel a little bit cheap and chintzy, but that's almost expected with most controllers. This is a $100 controller and there's even $350, $400 controllers, which I mean, that's more than the price of some consoles like the Xbox Series S and they still feel kind of cheap and chintzy. There's very, very few controllers that feel super durable in the hand. And this does feel a little bit plasticky, but it's not really a big deal. I, I think it would survive a couple of drops on a hardwood floor, not recommending to do any durability testing or anything. As for a quality control reputation, you hear very, very minimal complaints of Nacon controllers going bad. Generally, you hear things like Scuff, the Elite 1 and 2. Those are the main ones that come to mind. I haven't really heard of any horror stories of Nacon controllers crapping out. As for warranty, I will correct myself with a pinned comment in the comment sections, as well as a little note in the description if I find out later information. However, as of now, a simple Google search has shown multiple articles saying that Nacon controllers come with a two-year warranty, which is actually pretty dang good. D-pad feels very tactile and clicky. It is not mechanical. At least to my knowledge, it feels like a membrane switch. However, it is very responsive. You do get four separate distinct clicks, which feels very good. It's not mushy or anything. Same thing with the face buttons. They do feel like a step up from a standard Xbox controller. You get a nice resistance, a nice satisfying click, and then a nice little reset or rebound. They're also substantially bigger, flatter, and less slick than standard Xbox buttons. So granted, you probably won't be using the face buttons too much because it has these pretty sweet rear buttons, but if you do, these are a step up. As for the thumbsticks, you do get a very nice resistance. They also do feel very smooth and you do have anti-friction rings. So you will glide along those instead of the rough plastic of the front shell when you are at full lock. And overall, these thumbsticks do feel very, very good just from a user standpoint. Somebody that's had his grubby mitts, his gamer paws on a lot of thumbsticks, 
These feel pretty top tier, no lie. Now the ones installed by default are a couple of concave sticks. As you can see, there's a little bit of a hex design on the one on the left. And the one on the right has the notorious Nacon logo or emblem on there. Now this is where they fall a little bit short or flaccid. They are pretty slippery. Now I will say that maybe it's a rubber compound that will get more grippy over time. Just from friction, your fingertips heating up over time, maybe even the natural oils of your hand, it will break down and add grip over time. But these are a little bit slick. Let's pop on the dome sticks and feel how they feel. Okay, on the floor, that's where I wanted that. Dog hair adds to your snap aiming performance. Everyone knows that. Now to swap these out, they are just held on with friction. You do have to use a pretty good amount of muscle to pull them off. So I would limit the amount of times you remove and add sticks or swap them out. Just test the four included options, find out what you like and leave them on there because you could accelerate the potential of stick drift by constantly removing those sticks because you got to tug them off. Yeah, same thing pushing them back on. You got to use a good amount of force. And I feel like, I feel like it's doing damage to the thumbsticks as I'm doing this. Oh, God, leapers. Holy moly, that's like an oil slick. Yep, same thing with the uh, dome sticks. And with a dome stick, it's even more noticeable because you don't really have an indentation for your thumb to rest in. Slick as snot. Oh, man. Other than that, the thumb sticks feel great. Now, you will be able to use some generic slip-on thumb stick caps as those are universal and work with virtually any thumb stick. As for control freaks, I'll have pop-up right here in front of my face if this is compatible with control freaks. And if so, which ones? As this is a relatively new controller, they do not even have it listed in the compatibility chart on Control Freaks and also doing some research in forums and just Google. The consensus is no, Control Freaks do not work on this controller. However, there are generic slip over thumbstick caps that you will be able to use and I do recommend using those to get a little bit more height out of these sticks and also more grip because they are relatively slippery. To test the functionality of the buttons as well as dead zones of the thumbsticks, you are gonna come over here to settings in your Windows 10 PC and type in controller. Then you will see set up a USB game controller. As you can see, it's recognized as Xbox One for Windows. Either clicking properties or double clicking will pop up this window right here. And as you can see, this is the left analog stick in this little box over here. And it is dead center. There's no noticeable stick drift. We are going to use another program. It's a little more accurate in a minute. And then on the right analog stick, as you move it left and right, that's your X rotation. And then Y is going to be your vertical axis of adjustment. And then Z axis is going to be for your triggers. Squeezing the right trigger moves it to the left and squeezing the left trigger moves it to the right. D-pad is going to be registered over there in that point of view hat. You can see diagonal input puts and then pressing any of the buttons will illuminate what button you are pressing as well. This is gametester.com as reflected from this URL right here. These have virtually no dead zones and these are pre-calibrated like this out of the box. I will quickly show you two methods to calibrate your thumbsticks if you're having issues. Actually, you know what? That'll be in a separate video because this has perfect thumbstick dead zones. There's no need to calibrate it, but I will be making an in-depth video on how to detect and calibrate for stick drift. Also, ever so slightly squeezing the triggers gets me just a little bit of response. Squeezing them 100% is going to register 100%. Awesome. Now we're going to test the circularity, which is going to show if there's any dead spots or dead areas where when you're at full lock, it's not fully registering your inputs. Click on test circularity, spin joystick slowly to test. So you are going to indeed slowly spin your thumbsticks around. Awesome. I'm I'm flabbergasted with the quality of your thumbsticks. For a point of reference, the Nintendo Switch Pro controllers have around 35 to 40% average error, meaning that they're not very accurate. Sometimes you'll be pressing upright and it'll be like moving you just to the right. PS5 DualSense controllers generally are around 12 to 15%. Bravo, Nacon. A, a round of applause for you real quick. That is good stuff. 0%. That is insane. That, wow. As for triggers and bumpers, there are no trigger stops on here, and they do feel a little bit shorter than a standard Xbox One or Series controller, so if you are playing a racing game where you want to modulate the throttle and brake, this won't be the best, and also not the best for shooters either because it is a long enough pull to if you're trying to bust off shots with a semi-automatic gun, that's going to be a little slow for you too. So I do hope in the next version or iteration of this controller, especially because this is marketed as being a competitive first-person shooter controller with that lightning fast wire technology, just put some trigger stops on there. That's almost a standard or expected feature of premium esports controllers. Ergonomically, they do feel good though. They also have like a really cool paint job. It's black, but it has like a little bit of silver sparkle or metallic flake in there as well. I'm trying to talk not very loudly because my mouth is really close to this microphone. As for the bumpers, it's a mixed bag. They do have a nice tactile click, feel very responsive, but ergonomically, I think the shaping isn't the best for a natural resting hand position. And also they are one of the ones that if you press it from the edge here, you can see it's on a bit of a swivel or hinge. So if you press it right here, which some people actually, you know, press the bumpers like this, I'm exaggerating, but they press up here which still works, it's still actuating the switches, but not everyone just rests their hands like this. This is how I use the bumpers, but not everyone does. And as you can see, it's on a bit of a swivel or hinge. 
Now the most important feature of any premium or custom controller is going to be the rear buttons or paddle. That's what allows you to keep your fingers on the thumbsticks aiming and walking instead of having to come over here and use the face buttons. You can just bind them back here. Ergonomically these feel awesome. Right where you want to naturally hold your hand is where you're resting on the four rear buttons. They are easy to cleanly hit all four of them simultaneously and also you're not gonna accidentally actuate them because they're sunken into the rear shell quite a bit and also they require a good amount of resistance. The only downside to this, I would say, is if you have some rather fat fingers, for lack of a better word, you have a couple of bratwurst or a bunch of bananas for fingers. Since this is flush or almost sunken into the rear shell, you might have a hard time hitting these, but for me, with the bony ball of my fingers, I'm able to hit these buttons or if I wanna cock my fingers like that, I can use my fingertips. That doesn't feel great. I'd rather just hold it like that and just use the that little bony ball of my fingers, which works really good. As for remapping the rear buttons, you have two methods. You can do it on the fly, which I'll show you right now how to do that. And then I'll also show you on the PC, you can remap them inside the software suite, which is called Revolution App. You want to remap the rear buttons. Of course you do. Default out of the box key binds or mappings are pretty janky. Not to mention, actually, none of these are bound currently. You can tell by these four LED lights being not illuminated. What is illuminated is this RGB ring around the right analog stick. I have it plugged into one of the USB 3.0 ports in the front of Project Zero. Let's go ahead and rebind these on the fly. You have to switch it into classic mode, which is labeled as standard in the instruction manual. Then go ahead and hold down the... Did you guys just hear that thunderous boom? That lightning was close. Might be time for me to pop the AirPod Pros in so I don't have a panic attack. Anyway, you're gonna hold down the profile button for three seconds, and what's gonna happen is that uh, ring around the right analog stick is going to flash. Now you're gonna go ahead and press one of these rear buttons. Let's go ahead and press this bottom right here, and then press the button you want that associated with. It will flash three times and that LED indicator will remain solid, showing you that it's bound, and we can go ahead and move on to the next button. Bam and bam. Thank you, ma'am. Now to exit mapping mode, you are gonna hold down the profile button for another three seconds. And now the green LED around the right analog stick will be solid and you have your four rear buttons bound. Now I'm gonna bring you inside Project Zero, not like literally inside the case. Granted, it is pretty big. We probably could all fit in there, but I'm gonna walk you through their software suite, the Revolution app on how to remap the rear buttons, set trigger dead zones, as well as thumbstick dead zones. Now over here on the PC, this is the application you are gonna install. It's called Revolution X by Nacon on the Microsoft Windows app store it only has two reviews for an average of 2.5 which is not good however this is a relatively new application as this is a new controller so i'm sure they'll make it better over time with patches and updates so we're going to get this application right now and i'm going to go ahead and pin it down here to the taskbar for easy access it is 24 megabytes so a relatively small file so the very first thing you want to do whenever you get a new electronics item controllers included is update to the latest firmware patch so there's actually no updates available for this controller which isn't too surprising considering this is a brand new controller it's probably probably on build 1.0. So this application is actually pretty smooth. I don't know what those negative reviews were about. You can actually navigate with the controller very easily, or you can also use the keyboard. I'm pressing escape right now to go back, using the mouse to click on things. It is very responsive, easy to navigate, and actually has quite a bit of customization. So if I were somebody that wrote written reviews on the Microsoft Store, I would probably give this, as of now, a five. So we're gonna create a new profile. We're gonna call this AK40 Kevin. That's what they call me. So you got the front of your controller here. You can remap D-pad and face buttons. If you press Y, that's or backside. You've got the four rear mappable buttons, which we already remapped on the fly. You also have the bumpers and triggers. Pressing the right bumper, this is going to be the left analog stick or thumbstick, and you do have different response curves, and this is incredibly detailed. I would play around with these, but me personally, after several, several years, decades of using analog sticks, I actually prefer linear. It just seems the most accurate for me. Then you've got more over here for the right stick. Over here on triggers, you can also set dead zones. So if you want to be able to activate the switch at 100% just by barely pulling it, you can do that here. Here. Again, I would prefer if there were some actual physical hardware trigger locks on the controller itself. This is nice as well. Over here in audio, you have different EQ or equalizer modes. This is not the Dolby Atmos. This is just baked into the Nacon application. We will test Dolby Atmos in a little bit here. Advanced settings over here. You have your vibration, which is so weird. I've seen this on other controllers. I think it was Nacon controllers. The left and right are not coordinated. Left is at 50 and right is at 75 out of the box. Uh, por qué? Why would you want different amounts? Just, I'm going to put them at 100 each. Mm, that's unfortunate unfortunate. Mm, so limited keyboard functionality there, but that's, that's not a big deal. I'm just going to go ahead and use the analog stick for it. And then other than the rumbles inside of the palms, you can also adjust the vibration in the triggers as well. I'm going to go ahead and pop those on high. And then as for the lighting, that is, of course, the LED RGB ring around the right analog stick, which we're going to go ahead and customize right now. Teal and purple is the theme colors of Gamer Heaven. The teal looks good, but the purple almost looks like pink just because it's kind of getting a lot of bleed through from the other colors. That's really not showing up too good at all. Full, full screen that bad boy. Oh, let's cut the lights too. 
and the ceiling light. So it looks good, but it's not super accurate when it comes to color reproduction. Not a big deal. Uh, they also have other effects. Right now it's off, which is going to be a static or solid color. Pulsing is basically what's called breathing mode, where it fades in and out. I'm going to go ahead and crank it to its fastest speed to show you what that looks like. Okay, yep, breathing mode, good to see. Then you've got cycle over here. I'm gonna set that to its medium speed. Now it's not spectrum cycle where it goes through the colors like a rainbow pattern. It's just going around in a circle. Then you've got prism, which actually fades completely off and then comes in with a new color. It would be nice if it stayed on a static color and then just rotated through, but it actually pulsates off and then fades in with a new color, which not a tremendous fan of that either. I'm most likely just gonna keep this on static with teal and purple. Overall though, this is a pretty good software suite. It has a lot of customization and it is easy to use and navigate with a keyboard and mouse or a controller. You do also have some microphone settings over here. You do not have a built-in microphone in this controller. However, through that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, you will have control of your headsets, mic. Noise suppression is going to work as a noise gate to cut out background noise. So things like your fans or your dog panting, stuff like that. Now we're going to use a program called Polling Rate Checker. We're going to run this 4,000 sample input test. It says move the left analog stick. Holy... <laughs> Oh, Nacon, you are flattering me today. You know that? 3.9 milliseconds of input delay. That's fast. That's prior to any overclocking, which we are going to overclock right now. Good Lord. This thing is, this, this is impressing me. Now we're going to overclock this controller. I do have a full tutorial explaining step-by-step -step how to overclock a controller that will be linked in the description below. You can full screen this bad boy for easier navigation and visibility. Child names over here. Don't know why they name it that, but hopefully you're caught up on your child support because we're all parents now. Child names is actually the devices. You're going to make this bigger so you can read it. And if you're not sure what it is, you can unplug it and see what disappears. I'm going to do that now. So it's this Xbox game device over here. It says X input compatible HID device. It is on the default polling rate with a four mil a second response time out of the box. Let's go ahead and overclock this thing. Install service. Yup. 1000 polling rate. Install service. Yup. Filter on device. Install service. Yup. Now, if you unplug her and plug her back in, now we're getting a 1000 hertz polling rate and we are at a one millisecond response time. Let's see if that did anything for the legitimate measurable response time. Still getting about the same average response time of 3.9 to 4 milliseconds. However, it will be more consistent now that it is overclocked. So the application for Dolby Atmos surround sound is called Dolby Access. It is on the Windows Store. It is free to install. However, if you don't have an Atmos approved device, you have to pay, I believe it's $15 to activate. This is what the software program looks like. And when you plug in a headset or a controller, which I'm plugging in right now that does have Dolby Atmos. So that was the trick there. Unless you plug in a headset to the 3.5 millimeter jack, having the headset, or I'm sorry, the uh, controller plugged into your tower isn't going to do the trick for you. But once you plug in, as it says right down here in the bottom right, my sound source is headphones, Xbox controller. And then if you right click on the sound icon over here in your toolbar and go to spatial sound, it is automatically defaulted to Dolby Atmos for headphones. If you want to use Windows Sonic, you can. This also supports DTS, but I'm going to leave it on Dolby Atmos as that is, well, in my opinion, the the best out of these three options and also one of the key features of this product. But as you can see, it is ready to use. Get immersive audio through your Nacon Revolution X. So it automatically recognizes what device it is. And yes, we've given a license for Dolby Atmos to this. All right, so this is on the Dolby website and this is the Atmos Visualizer Music tab. It is a demo or demonstration of the Atmos. So we're gonna try it right now. Okay, that makes a huge difference. So that's just stereo there. And when I switch it over to, holy, that wakes it up. <laughs> now I'm going to mute the song that was playing because obviously that is a copyrighted song and it will get the video at least demonetized, if not a pinch on the old giblets from Google. Ugh, gross stereo. That's insane. All right, so let me explain why I'm using this headset. This is a Sony Pulse 3D headset rather than say, for example, the rig headset that was sent out for review recently. That headset already has Dolby Atmos built in and supported. I wanted to use a headset that does not have Dolby Atmos support so I could see how just the Dolby Atmos software pushes that virtual surround sound to a headset that doesn't have that technology built into the drivers. And it actually sounded just as good as using any other headset that has Dolby Atmos. So that's incredibly impressive that you can get Dolby Atmos surround sound out of any headset you plug into this controller. That's a huge pro. So the pros, cons, and verdict of the Nacon Revolution X controller over here. We'll start with the cons because there is less of them. The included thumbsticks aren't fantastic. They're incredibly slippery. I hope they go to a different rubber compound that offers a little bit more grip. That's very important with dome sticks where they're shaped in a way to where grippy rubber is very important. Next up, I would like to see some kind of rubberized grips on here. This plastic is uh, feels better than just a smooth plastic shell, but it's not necessarily grippy by any means. Also, the bumpers are 
aren't the best design because they are a swiveling from a little hinge mechanism right here. So if you are somebody that presses them up top like this, which is very few people, it still actuates them, but it just doesn't feel the best. Please add trigger stops at least on and off, if not three-way trigger stops, especially if this is going to be marketed as some kind of a competitive esports controller, as in the premium and custom controller segment or market that is almost an expected and standard feature. That's all I got for the cons department. Now for the pros, it is incredibly ergonomically comfortable and that extends over here to these rear buttons, which I have to say I am a big old fan of, to be honest. They are ergonomic, comfortable, can be remapped on the fly or with the software. You're able to cover all four of them simultaneously. I have gotten zero accidental actuations out of them and it's just a damn fine rear button design. The fact that this works out of the box with Dolby Atmos and allows you to get a free copy of that application or program, granted, whatever headset or earbuds you're using might not be fully optimized for Dolby Atmos, you're still getting access to that virtual surround, which is awesome. This is the only controller I've ever tested that offers that. Next up, the stock thumbsticks, analog sticks, whatever you want to call them, joysticks, if you will, are fantastic. As you saw from our testing, they have virtually zero dead zone out of the box, are perfectly calibrated, and had also a fantastic response curve. Not to mention, they do feel good. They have a good resistance to them, and also you get those anti-friction rings for when you're at full lock. The only thing holding the thumbsticks back is what I mentioned during the cons, is the actual thumbsticks. However, you can always slip on some kind of generic thumbstick caps to get you a little bit more grip and also raise up the right stick a little bit. The D-pad and face buttons are a huge upgrade over a standard controller. They are bigger, cleaner to hit, and also have a nice tactile click without being noisy or clicky. Next up, the warranty. A two-year warranty is fantastic. Most controllers offer three months, six months, or a year. I would say the best warranty that I've seen from a controller thus far. So what is my final verdict? If you are a PC controller player or you have an Xbox One or Series and do not mind being wired or you actually prefer to be tethered via wire, this is a fantastic controller. At 100 US dollars, this is a solid buy. This is one of the best rear button designs I've ever seen. The analog sticks are freakishly accurate. It ergonomically feels good, has a good warranty in case God forbid something goes wrong. Face button and D-pads feel good. And cosmetically, I didn't mention this, but I think it looks good. It's subtle, classy, flat matte blacks. So you're not going to get any fingerprints or smudges on there. You have that little RGB ring to add a little flare. You can turn that off if you don't want it. And you have Dolby Atmos surround sound. So now you have access to Windows Sonic, which is already baked into your Xbox and Windows 10 or Dolby Atmos. So you have two virtual surrounds or you can turn them off completely if you want. So that's pretty dang cool. I definitely recommend it if you're in the market for a $100 wired controller. So where can you buy this bad boy? Amazon or on their website? I will have links in the description below as well as any exclusive discount codes that I'm able to bust out my shovel and dig up for you. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming giblets. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back, AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form video videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.